I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. Very pleased to be joined by Bill Browder. He's the CEO and founder of, um, of Heritage Capital Management. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank, tell me why I should not invest in Russia. Well, I was um, at one point the largest investor in Russia. Um, I went out there in 1996 and I set up an investment fund called the Hermitage Fund. We started small. Um, it eventually grew to become the largest investment fund in the country with uh, four and a half billion dollars of money under management in Russia. And one of the things I discovered when I was um, uh, investing there was that the companies that I was investing in, um, the big state companies that we own shares of, um, were all corrupt. <clears throat> corrupt meaning that the managements of those companies were stealing billions of dollars out of those companies for their own benefit. I decided to expose the corruption in those companies and uh, in retaliation the Russians um, uh, expelled me from the country, um, canceled my visa, and declared me a threat to national security, never to return. At that point, um, we pulled our money out of the country because we didn't want to be exposed, and I pulled my people out of the country. Mm -hmm. um, the police then raided our offices, um, seized all of our documents, and then in a highly sophisticated crime, they then stole $230 million from, uh, uh, from the, of taxes that we paid, not from us, but from the Russian government. They stole the tax money. Um, a young lawyer named Sergei Magnitsky, who worked for us, um, discovered the theft. Mm -hmm. He then um, exposed it, um, testified against the, uh, some of the people involved, and then he was subsequently arrested, put in pretrial detention, tortured for 358 days, and then killed at the age of 37. This happened three years ago. So this is what happens to the largest portfolio investor in their country. Since then, we, we expected to get some kind of justice. It was a high-profile mm -hmm. uh, murder. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of evidence. Um, it was clear who did it. Um, there was no, no mystery no about question. that. No um, question. Since then, um, Dmitry Medvedev, who was at the time the president, ordered an investigation. Mm -hmm. um, he um, uh, was then uh, informed by, by his own human rights council of, uh, that, that Sergei was murdered. He was beaten on the last night of his life, mm -hmm. um, that he had discovered a financial crime and exposed it. And we would expect it, you know, given that kind of uh, situation, that they would prosecute the people. Not a single person has been prosecuted. All the people who were involved um, um, have been promoted. Some have received state honors. And most shockingly, um, uh, very shortly, they will be opening the very first prosecution from this case, and that will be against Sergei Magnitsky himself. <laughs> as a dead, not there who's to... not, not there to defend himself, because he's dead. He's dead at their hands. So this is the story of what happened to me. Um, and what happened to Sergei, more importantly. Mm -hmm. what, what makes this such a uh, sort of timely story is that Dmitry Medvedev is here mm -hmm. as we speak, probably not more than a few hundred yards away right. in Davos, and he's trying to convince um, uh, the people who are perhaps not educated or um, don't right. read the newspapers um, that they should come with their money and, their, and the livelihoods of their employees and come and invest in Russia. And um, I'm here to make sure that, um, that his message um, doesn't get heard without hearing my message as well. It's a pretty shocking story. <laughs> Do you ever think that um, you might be in danger as well? I, I surely am in danger. Um, I and my colleagues who are pursuing this campaign for justice are in danger. We received a number of death threats by uh, voicemail and email. Um, but the one thing I can say is that Sergei Magnitsky was, was killed. He was, he was taken hostage and killed. Um, and he was brave enough to um, uh, fight for the right thing in a much more exposed situation. And, and I and my colleagues are not going to be um, backing down from this fight, even if there's a threat to our lives. What can you do besides talking to the media? What else, what else can you do? Well, we've done something much more significant than talking to the media, mm -hmm. which is that we've gone around, we figured out what it is. <clears throat> if we can't get justice inside of Russia, where can we get justice mm -hmm. and what is justice? And, and the answer is that, that the people who committed these crimes did them for money. They stole $230 million and they killed the whistleblower. And so we said, what do the people who stole this money really want? And what they really want is to be able to keep that money outside the country in a safe bank in the West to be able to send their wives and children out of the country in safe houses in, in, in the West, and to be able to buy luxury products and go on vacations and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so we said, let's take that away from them. And so we've gone to the United States, Canada, and to the European Union, mm -hmm. and we've asked them to impose visa sanctions and asset freezes on the people involved in this case, and the people involved in similar cases. 
And on December 14th last year, um, Barack Obama signed the Sergei Magnitsky Rule of Law Accountability Act. Mm -hmm. Sergei Magnitsky was our lawyer, which will impose visa sanctions and asset freezes on all the people who were involved in his death and other gross human rights abuses in Russia. Um, there are 12 European countries that are, where the parliaments are considering similar legislations. The European Parliament has passed a resolution calling on the European Union to do EU-wide visa sanctions and asset freezes, um, and Canada is in, involved in the same discussion. This has completely and absolutely hit the Achilles heel of the Russian regime. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely terrified that their ill-gotten blood money um, won't be um, welcome in the West and that it may be frozen in the West. This is exactly what they're most, most afraid of. This mm -hmm. is what keeps them up at night. And um, uh, in response, in response to the U.S. Act, they did something which is the most morbid and immoral thing you could ever imagine, which was um, in retaliation, they said that their own orphans, their own disabled orphans um, who um, uh, are being adopted by American parents can no longer be adopted by American parents. <laughs> They're basically um, uh, using their disabled orphans with Down syndrome and other terrible, right. terrible afflictions um, as uh, human shields to allow them to continue to travel. Um, it's, it's just, they call it, they, they call it Herod's Law in Russia because there was a King Herod who, who basically went right. and killed all the babies in, in uh, mm -hmm. Bethlehem mm -hmm. um, in the Bible. It's the same type of thing. I, the story just gets worse and worse. So what's next for you? Well, um, they're, they're about to actually prosecute me mm -hmm. um, along with Sergei Magnitsky. Um, and they're prosecuting me in absentia mm -hmm. um, to try to shut me up um, so that they can they go around the world and say, look, this is a criminal who's, who's advocating for all these laws. Um, I don't think that's going to stop me. Uh, the other thing which, which we're doing, which has been quite effective, is that we actually tracked um, 135 million of this $230 million that was stolen. Um, and we tracked it to eight different countries, and we've written to the prosecutors in each of those countries. And there's now assets being frozen all around Europe mm -hmm. um, and in criminal money laundering investigations that are open. And every day there's a new development in that, that part of the story. And again, they, they can't even imagine... Um, uh, this is their worst possible nightmare that, that they didn't get away with it. Money is, leaves an unerasable trail mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we've now started to track the money and it's going to lead to all sorts of interesting places. And I imagine that you're not going to give up. <laughs> Absolutely not. We're not going to give up. And, right. um, and I think that in the end um, uh, these people are, you know, this is not an unusual crime. The only thing unusual about it is the amount of evidence and the fact that there's a uh, an intensely dedicated team um, focusing on justice. Um, but what, what will happen, I believe, is that this will be the, this, this may be the straw or one of the straws that eventually breaks the camel's back. They've completely delegitimized their own regime, in, in, not just in the West, but in their own people's eyes, particularly with this um, adoption ban. And um, I believe that um, Putin's days are numbered because he's basically shown everybody who he really is. Gosh, Bill, thank you so much for coming in to share your story here in Hub Culture at the Davos Pavilion, and I'm Edie Lush.